I have discovered that in the 24 inch square, I can really create an intimate relationship throughout the entire painting for the viewer. And so, and it's easy to travel with. <laughs> and it's easy to pack and ship. So all of those things are factoring into my decision as to why I'm staying with 24 inch squares for now. That helps me stay consistent. Hey everyone, I'm Mary Ann Mitchell. Welcome to Whole Artist Mastery, which is built on the philosophy of what it means to be a whole artist and what it means to be a whole human being. It starts with understanding your true artistic voice, then learning how to make compelling work and knowing what you want to do in the world as an artist and how those three components fit together to create a wholeness within yourself that shows up in your work as well. So how does that relate to being out there in the world as a practicing professional artist or wanting to get into galleries, wanting to have people see your work, entering juried shows, alternative places that you know of in your particular corner of the world that you'd like to show your work. And so you go out there looking for advice about, well, what's the best way to approach this? And the number one piece of advice that all art marketing uh, experts, including myself as a practicing professional artist, will say is, well, you need a consistent body of work. Well, what does that mean? What if you say to yourself, well, you know, gosh, you know, I don't really feel like my work is consistent. I mean, I'm sort of all over the map. I do more uh, structural pieces and then I have very fluid pieces and I have black and white pieces. I like to work in different mediums. I love watercolor, but I also work in mixed media. I have collage work. How is all this going to fit together as a consistent body of work? So I'm going to share with you a few of my thoughts to answer that question. So I believe the foundation for having a consistent body of work and at the same time honoring the range of materials, mediums, and compositional approaches that you may have in your voice, in your artistic repertoire, is to first understand what's at the core of who you are as a human being, who you are as an artist. Why are you inspired by what you're inspired by? What is it that catches your attention? And knowing why. Because that is the keystone to tying all these different pieces together. So in my case, I'm going to share a little bit about my journey that has led me to understand how valuable knowing what your core expression is in the whole landscape of being a, an artist. So the very first time I wrote an artist statement, I was applying for the Mid-Atlantic Arts Foundation Fellowship in painting many years ago. <laughs> and I remember, you know, writing an artist statement is in and of itself an excellent way to bring some conscious awareness to what your unconscious expression is all about. So in doing so, I realized that the crux of everything that I was doing rooted back to this balance of polar opposites. And back at that time, it was balancing architecture architectural structure in a composition with fluid movement, organic movement. And sometimes the paintings would be much more fluid with an underlying structure, and other times they would be much more architectural with very little fluidity and yet a depth of color was there, which in and of itself is a kind of fluid movement. So in thinking about, well, how am I going to make an argument that there's a consistent body of work here when some are clearly much more architectural than others, I realized that the common denominator was pulling together these polar opposites. 
in harmony and that each painting was discussing that coming together in harmony from opposite ends of whatever it is that I'm working with. Each painting resolved in a way that was different than the last and yet every single painting was rooted in that combination of architecture and fluid movement. I got the grant. Much to my tremendous surprise, I was one of 10 uh, recipients out of, I believe, 1,500 applicants. So it was a huge um, sort of first time out win. And I really credit my awareness at the time to understanding that there was a range in my voice and that that range and the range of inspiration was able to come together to draw a picture, to create a story that was consistent and yet had latitude within um, the different ways that I was making paintings. So that's number one. Being authentic to your inner voice and understanding the range of what your voice is and how it's coming out. Now, in my case, I was working with the same medium. At the time, it was oil on paper. But let's say you're a person who is working in mixed media, but also works in sculpture, let's say, also does watercolor. What the question you have to ask yourself is, what is the common thread in all of my pieces here? Even though they're completely different mediums, what's the foundational voice here? And it may take a while to answer that question. Um, so there are previous videos that I've um, offered for your viewing pleasure. One is the treasure hunt, which is a great way for you to start uncovering the sources of your inspiration, why you're inspired by what you're inspired by, and who you are. And so I invite you to go take a look at the treasure hunt video because it really can kick off this self-exploration of understanding what your voice is all about. So that's number one piece, in my opinion, as a practicing professional artist, is the authenticity to your work, staying true to who you are, and what the range of your work is as a result of who you are, is the foundation of your consistent body of work. Number two, <laughs> is not that I'm counting but it is this is to me the next thing that floats into my mind is the complete opposite of what I've just said which has to do with presentation it is very important that you choose one or two sizes within the square family in other words you could do 12 inch squares and 48 inch squares or you know, 24 squares and 60 squares, or whatever squares you're most comfortable with. And then in the rectangle family, you choose um, one or two ratio uh, relationships. So for instance, like 16 by 20 is um, less of a long, elongated rectangle than let's say 20 by 40. So maximum sizes that you should have to present as a consistent body of work is two different sizes of rectangles and two different sizes of squares. Ideally, it's best if you have one or two only so that when you're hanging the show, there's a consistency, there's a feeling of um, wholeness uh, in the space that you're hanging your show, as well as on your website. You know, that you can see, well, I, I don't have a small rectangle here and a square and then another large rectangle. Many platforms have a very hard time um, accepting all these different size rectangles and, and squares together. So that's, that's really something to consider. The other thing to consider is in choosing your sizes, what kind of a space do you paint in? I'm currently in the smallest studio I've ever had in my entire professional life. 
It's just a little over 100 square feet, but it has wonderful light, which you might be able to see in all these different videos that you've been watching of mine in this studio space. But it is requiring me to stick to most comfortably the 24 inch square. I can do 36 inch squares, but it's a little more cumbersome. 40 inch square, 48 inch squares are just out of the question, which I'm really okay with because I have discovered that in the 24 inch square, I can really create an intimate relationship throughout the entire painting for the viewer. And so, and it's easy to travel with <laughs> and it's easy to pack and ship. So all of those things are factoring into my decision as to why I'm staying with 24 inch squares for now. That helps me stay consistent. So that's also a byproduct of staying in a certain um, range of sizes is that it helps your voice to actually travel even further because it's a little bit like children, you know, if you give them their boundaries and they know what their boundaries are. And then within those boundaries, they're allowed to do, let their imaginations fly. They are feeling much more secure and actually are able to um, come up with many more creative ideas. So it's also true with choosing the sizes or not, not painting on all these different size papers or, or canvases because every time you start something different, you have to, See it differently you have to reacquaint your acquaint yourself with a whole new size and that can throw the consistent voice off in your work that's a very important point and another piece is understanding what kind of person you are and this speaks to the wholeness that I'm talking about which is you know, understanding what your true exp expression is and why it comes out the way it does, and then how you make compelling work in the sizes that you choose and the mediums that you choose. And the third piece is knowing who you are as a person and building a consistent body of work for a small venue is a very different um, challenge, let's say, than building a body of work for a very large studio space or a very large gallery space. Um, most of the galleries in New York have huge spaces and in Chelsea and um, LA, you know, the big uh, art hubs around the country and around the world are gorgeous, big spaces. I mean, Pace Gallery, Gagosian Gallery, Hauser Worth, um, David Zwerner, they're all big galleries in Chelsea and they have galleries all around the world as well. And their spaces are huge and beautifully lit. You're going to make a completely different kind of work for a space like that. And it may require your consistency in your voice and the kind of work you're making to shift a little bit versus showing in a small coffee shop, which is every bit as valid but realizing that showing um, 60 inch square paintings could be a little problematic in a small space. So you want to think about, you know, what kind of person am I? And do I feel most comfortable going down the street to my local coffee shop, my local place where everybody hangs out and asking if they would be interested in having a show of my work? I know somebody, one of the artists who's worked with me, has put her work, her the person who runs a salon where she goes to get her hair cut and spa and all of that, asked her if she would put her work in his space for a while. And she sold several pieces just by having it hang in his salon and spa. So that's you know an example of being in a community and having somebody in the community ask you to show your work. What's the consistency there you know, the need to have true, you know, everything fit together and having a very clean presentation may be a little different than if your goal is to end up in David Zwerner's gallery in Chelsea. Uh, if that is your goal, and that's a very strong, valid goal to have, one that I totally support, 
is that you all right well that's going to somewhat decide for you how big the pieces are what the voice inside you and is going to um, express on that scale so these are all things to consider in terms of the kind of person you are if you're ready to shoot for the top tier of galleries or if you're wanting to just go down the street to your local whatever uh, somebody that you know who runs a shop and a salon coffee place restaurant and show your work there because that just feels more like you and everything in between to small boutique galleries to places that are art centers that host juried shows so I ask you to think about what kind of person you are and you want to get your work out there but what are the places that feel most um, resonant with the kind of person that you are so again we're going to wrap this all up by saying that who you are in terms of the kind of um, things that strike your inspiration from the core of your expression and then how that determines your use of medium, visual language, composition, and then who you are as a person and what that, how that factors into showing your work will all help you understand what your consistent body of work entails. So very quickly, I'm just gonna show you right here these are two different pieces that are entirely different from each other that I believe both discuss the whole concept of light and dark, um, structure and depth of color, of um, feeling contained and wide open at the same time, feeling like you're going beyond to another world and going below to another world and then having the middle part kind of tie it together and in this one feeling like the place that you could go forever and ever is contained and this brilliant red purple is surrounded by a very cool green and peach color uh, you'll be seeing uh, pieces on the screen of what these pieces look like so you can look at them up close and um, But I wanted to use these as two examples of How a voice can be consistent and at the same time have totally different work So I hope that was helpful hearing me ramble on about all of that if this is something that is truly um, top of mind that you're wanting to move into a direction of getting your work out there and need help building a consistent body of work, but also need help in the first step, which is determining you know, what my voice is. The whole Artist Mastery Mentorship programs are key to making that happen for you as deeply and as succinctly, I fast track it for you, so that you're on your way much more effectively and quickly than you would be if you struggle on your own. <laughs> so I invite you to look at the whole Artist Mastery website, sign up for a complimentary conversation on the mentorship page, and I look forward to hearing your story and then sharing with you how the mentorship programs work. So thanks very much. I hope this was enjoyable. If so, you know what to do. Press the little like button. Leave a comment in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. And I'll see you next time.